Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie, Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie, Jessica. So it's that time of the week. It's time for us to go over our one minute book recs or all of our books that we've read in the past week with one minute synopsis. So this is our one minute book recs. Uh, but I think we have some housekeeping stuff to take care of before that. We do, like mm -hmm. the timer. Oh, that, yes, that. <sighs> right. <clears throat> Okay, so first off, hit that subscribe button so you can be entered to win these books. We will be giving them away when we reach 1,500 subscribers, so we're getting there. So hit that subscribe button, tell your mm -hmm. friends, follow us on Instagram for an extra entry. And then our other thing, because we love to give free, away free books on our channel, is we do have the signed copy of Possession by BJ Alpha from our BJ Week a while ago. And we apologize, this past week has been crazy for both of us. So mm -hmm. we were wanting to get to this sooner and we just weren't able to. So uh, we wrote down everybody's names and we have our winner for mm -hmm. the book because yay free books, right? Yay free books! Okay. Yes. yes. Okay, and our winner is Lisa Berjeski. I really hope I said your last name right. <laughs> so, Please Yay! message us so we can make sure that we get you in touch with the right people to get that signed book yes. on its way to you. Yeah, and it's going to come from BJ in the UK. So it'll take a little bit. She's a, uh, I don't even know if she has the paper, like the actual physical copies yet, but she will get you one as soon as she has them. This week was crazier than last week for me and I know for you as well. <laughs> so let's talk about our reading week. Uh, how was yours? I did not have much time to do any reading. I was extremely busy. So mm -hmm. I didn't really listen to books. I didn't read books. It's quite depressing. <sighs> yeah. There's just sometimes, you know, in life that other things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have five books. Okay. So this one minute book rec. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how my week was because I still had in-laws here and I got to see you and we had so much going on. So I read six books, but we're only talking about five because one of them is one that I reread a while back and talked about a while back. So we don't need to talk about it today. All right. Okay. So. You love your rereads. I do, especially when I need that, like when I'm busy or when I need like that comfort read and I needed it. Uh, so my first read of the week was an audio that I listened to. This is the third book in a series, but it can, they can be read, read as standalones. And I read the other ones a long time ago and then picked this one back up. So I wasn't missing anything. So this is The Darkest Temptation by Daniel Laurie. This is a well-loved one too. So, you know, here we go. All right. So this is Mafia. This is about Mila, who is the daughter of what she believes to be a Russian businessman, but if you've read Mafia Romance, you know that that's not the case. And her dad, she hasn't seen him in a while. She's a little worried about him. She knows that he went to Russia. So she decides she's going to go to Russia. She's going to find her dad, which was just, just silly of her because she's never been, even though she can't speak a little Russian. And when she gets there, she's assaulted or attacked in a alleyway and she's saved by this hot, gorgeous Russian man. And we all know where that's going to lead. He pretends to be somebody that he's not. Um, he knows exactly who she is. He knows what's going on. And that is where we meet Ronan. And he's not all that he seems. And this little girl should not have gone to Russia by herself. That's all I'm going to say about that, because that's how that goes. So this is definitely age gap, mafia, dark. Uh, it's just, it's great. I, li I liked it. I gave it four stars. I know that a lot of people absolutely love this one. And I probably would have like given it five stars if I didn't read as much Mafia as I did or as I do, but I, I still enjoyed it quite a bit. So what was your first read of the week? Well, Jessica, do you mean my first cry of the week? Oh yeah. You sent me pictures. Sorry. Yeah. Hysterical crying. Yeah. That's my first read of the week. Okay. Well, tell All right. us about it. Yes, so I read The Cabin by Jacinda. Is that how you say it? Wilder? I think so. Uh, so we have Nadia and Adrian. And they have like an epic love story for the books, if you will. 
this is not a spoiler. I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is a spoiler. It's not a spoiler because it's right on the black back blurb. Wow. The blurb on the back of the book. And Adrian dies and he knows he's going to die. So he creates a new love story for Nadia. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what to say. Like, I'm going to cry just trying to talk about it. It was the most, probably the most emotional book I've read in a very long time. Mm -hmm. Like, I was hysterically crying through probably the entire book. Like, oh my gosh. I loved it. Mm -hmm. Loved it. I don't really want to say too much more about it because there's, you know, don't want to have spoilers. But yeah. Right. Yeah, it was so good. I teared up, but not a tear fell. I don't think I would be able to move on like that. Mm -mm. And the whole time I was thinking about, um, I we have close friends who the husband died two years ago from pancreatic cancer and they're 50, roughly. Uh, and they got kids behind it. I just, oh, that was what I was thinking of the whole time. So it made me just, well, it just made that book that much more, you know emotional so i couldn't do it i couldn't imagine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it'd be hard all right moving on to the next book i i picked up the fourth book in grace mcginty's dark river days because i read the first three and then the fourth one came out about a year and a half two years ago and it was like the same story the same characters it was just like 20 years down the road and when I was picked it up and read it, I love this series, but I was like, um, I feel a little lost because it's been so long since I read the first three books. So I read the first book. I just stopped and went back and read the first book. So let me tell you about the first book because it's so good. So this is Newly Undead in Dark River by Grace McGinty. This is about Micah. Micah is backpacking in Canada and she's going, she's been doing it with friends and other friends have left her. Uh, and she decided to stay an extra week and hike a little bit more or backpack a little bit more throughout Canada. And she, when the story starts, she wakes up in like a culvert or a drainage ditch in Canada and she's insanely hungry. She's wet. She's dirty. She doesn't know how she got there. Um, but when she crawls out of the drainage ditch, her backpack's missing, all these things are gone, but she sees the sign that says, um, welcome to um, Dark River. And so she uh, ends up going into town and finding this diner. And then everybody looks at her like she's crazy when she walks in because they all know that she's been turned into a vampire. And she, even though she has no clue that that's even a thing at this point. Um, and then, you know, things, things move on from there. The story is great because in this world, in this Dark River, this little town in Canada, everybody's a vampire, but they're not allowed to drink from humans or make new vampires and somebody drank from her somebody made her a vampire so you have that mystery it is reverse harem you have the hot sheriff because oh my gosh why wouldn't you so i did a reread of that so that i can continue on so i can pick up the fourth because i just felt like i was missing out on something well <laughs> it's funny that your book your second book was a grace mcginty book because my second book is a grace <laughs> mcginty book awesome okay so tell us, tell so, us. Hold on, hold your so horses. Always get excited. So there's a reason that we both are reading Grace McGinty right now. And that is because we're going to be doing an interview with her. So you're mm -hmm. going to want to check our channel on Wednesday for the yes. Grace McGinty interview. Yes. All right. Sorry. So okay. I read Pay Per Heart. Mm -hmm. This is about Blake. Blake is our heroine. And she moves to California to go to this like design school. She works um, in web design and she's very excited to be there. And she finds out it's a complete scam and she has very little money left. And she does not want to have to go home and tell her parents that like the big, big bad LA like, you know, ate her up basically. So she's determined to try and make it work. So she answers an ad and she's very excited because this is going to come with like room and board and get her out of her like bug infested, gross motel room that she's staying <laughs> in. And here she meets Darwin, Everett, and Harrison. So we have a reverse harem situation obviously happening. And they all do online porn. Kind of think like OnlyFans, I think. 
I think. Mm -hmm. So one of them does pottery naked, one of them cooks naked, and there's my time. And the other one strokes things naked. Big and thing. so this is what they do. And they need her to help like edit videos and all of this stuff. And she decides to go for it because she's really desperate. So I know that you're thinking, but Mandy, I'm looking at that cover and there's four guys on there, but you only yeah. named three. Well, yes, yes, you are right. There is a fourth guy that will come into play. So yeah. buckle up, read the story. Grace always has a sense of humor in her books, or at least in the ones I've read, always had that sense of humor. So mm -hmm. they're always fun. I just don't get the reverse harem, but. Yeah, I right. know you don't. I'm sorry. But I'm proud of you for doing that. I rated it a four. Good. I'm glad you like that. I don't know that I said what I rated the cabin because I was focused on not starting to cry. I was writing my notes and I was like crying, <laughs> just trying to write my notes. That book was so incredibly emotional. So I did rate it a five. It was phenomenal. A yeah. book that can make you feel continuously that is a writer exactly exactly i mean oh my gosh mm -hmm. Th and that's why we read you read to feel yes yep oh my sinuses were drained <laughs> like oh it was bad oh, okay we need to move on or i'm gonna start crying yeah. again okay so my adrian loaded so much <laughs> okay okay my next book was a highly anticipated audio for this month. And I could have read the book a while ago, but I chose to wait for the audio. And that was Burned Dreams by Neva Altai. Oh, yes. Yeah, you like this one. Okay, so let's talk about this. So this is about Alessandra or as and Ravenna. So Ravenna is married to this mafia dude. She was forced into the marriage to... Um, her brother had some kind of a debt and so she was forced into marrying this guy and he is very cruel to her and he he abuses her physically and he is just he's he is a worthless excuse for a human but that's what's going on here and then you have alessandro who has been brought in as her bodyguard he is kind of like a hitman he was raised he was um, trained in this secret group and by the government and he knows how to take people out and he is out for revenge. Um, it's been eight years and he's trying to get revenge on someone who did something to him. And that was, is, uh, Ravenna's husband. So he's being brought in as her bodyguard because he worked his way up the mafia. Her husband doesn't know. And, um, his plan is to kill Ravenna and then kill her husband, but things don't always go according to plan. So, you know, Oh, this was so good. This was great. I gave it five stars. I have yet to read Aniva Altai that I have not loved. But this this was good. I really yeah. liked them as a couple. Apparently, I like it when the girl gets beat up. I, I don't get it. I don't know what's wrong with me. Bad. I, think I love like the angst in that because he is, he is torn up and he's a broken man over what happened. Yeah. And then his grand scheme of a plan that's going to set him free. Mm -hmm. It's I very think, complicated. I think I like to see the bad guy get his just desserts. And if he's hurting her, he's going to get his just desserts. And I like to see the way the hair. His what? Just desserts. <laughs> Twist the mustache. <coughs> his comeuppance. <laughs> What else do you want to pull out? I can pull out some other fun ones I use with the kids. Um, but I think that I do I like to see that they're the, the women become strong again, and you see that in the books too. So, you know. Don't laugh. But you're saying you want to see him get his just desserts. Well, most yeah. people want their desserts. Well, I always want my dessert, but I don't want the kind of dessert he he deserved to get. Okay, anyhow. Is that really a saying just desserts? Yes. Yes, it is. You have not heard that. Are you Googling it? Do you not believe me? Oh, good gravy. Jessica, you are somebody. I love you dearly. This is not like, a, this is not meant as a criticism. Mm -hmm. But you are somebody, you could go on one of those TV shows like, and 
like lie and nobody would know that you were lying. Like, you know, the like hmm. there was that where they had to say like three lies and a truth, truth. and people yeah. had to figure out which one it was. I would lie. laugh the whole time. You no, know exactly you, which one. you will die on a hill if you think you're right, even when but you I have don't to really believe. know. I have to believe that I'm right. Wow. If you <laughs> say that someone has got their just desserts, you mean that they deserve the unpleasant things that have happened to them. I can't believe you've never heard that. <laughs> I think it's a fairly common phrase. Um, and just so everybody out there knows, I don't, and Maddie knows this too, <laughs> even though I could go on to say those things with a straight face, I am really against lying. Like really, really, really against lying. <laughs> it, may, it almost sounds like you're like, yeah, Jessica could lie her way out of anything. I don't know. It's really against No, <laughs> I guess that's wrong. I meant like when you, like... I could make you, you believe something. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because you were so adamant. Uh-huh. Yeah. My poor husband. And I think sometimes you even think that you might be wrong, but you just dig in and keep going. At that point, I mean, especially if it's with my husband. Yeah. Uh -huh. I believe you've been described as aggravating before. By both of you. What's up with that? <laughs> The other day, Jeff told me I was aggravating, and I looked at him, and I was like, when Mandy says it, she says it with love. That was mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, gosh. All right. So, now that we know that just desserts is a thing that I did not make up, <laughs> what book do you have next? Well, I read Forgotten Desires by Corinne Michaels. This is the last in the Whitlock family series. So we have Brindley and Carson. Okay. So, oh, where'd my timer go after I was looking up just desserts? Okay. So Brindley, this is the part that was a little bit too much of a stretch for me, but I went with it because I love Corinne Michaels and the rest of the book was great. Brindley fell in love with this guy named Crew 10 years ago on spring break vacation okay and it has not really gotten over him so that we're talking like a one week fling situation okay 10 years later huh. still hung up on him she's at a wedding that he happens to be at and she recognizes him and she's like wait your name your crew why why are you going by carson and he's like oh that was just a nickname and he apparently has also been kind of hung up on her as well. And he's currently getting a divorce and his ex-wife is kind of a piece of work. And he needs her to marry him so he can try and get custody of, like, full-time, full custody of his daughter. So... There you have it. So we have like the marriage of convenience trope, single dad trope, and all of that fun stuff. So I rated it a four. I listened to it. The audio was great. I listened to it on my way home, though, from when I'd been gone for the, like, you don't like my story. You're making a lot of faces. I have a teenager who is slamming doors for some reason because... That's just what she does. Not that she's mad. She doesn't understand the door handle turns. Too shy. So sorry if you heard the, the slamming of the doors. Sorry, keep going. I think it was just your eye movements that were distracting everyone. No, you. So, you just <laughs> anyways, the from my house. It was a really long day. I had a very long drive to come home, and I listened to it then. So that might have been like why I was just like, really, like ten years. I don't know. I still rated a four. I still enjoyed it. I just, I don't know. Sometimes it's easy to move past things in a book and be like, I understand. Like, we just have to go with the author's yeah. scenario they're painting here. But then other times some things just become a little hang up. So for me, I was just like, I just don't see. Like, I get that the reuniting and they run into each other and maybe that chemistry is still there. But it just seemed like she had been pining and pining for him. I don't know. I think yeah. I'm. I think I read too much into it. Ha, 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 ha. Maybe it's because you were so sad you left me and you just couldn't focus on the book. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know Still a solid four, though. I've enjoyed okay. that series. Okay. 
All and right. I enjoy Corinne Michaels. Yes. Yeah. A lot. So the next book that I have is an author that we both love. And this was like one of her only books that I have not read. Um, and the audio came out this past week and I was very excited to read it. And that was Dangerous Innocence by Cora Riley. So this is her oh, new. I thought you were talking about something else. And I'm like, your pants are on fire because I can name off four books right now of hers that you haven't read. But wrong author. What author were you thinking of? Calorie. Oh. Oh. Oh, no, I'm not done with that because I tried to listen to that audio because the 16th Me came out this week, too, on audio. But I tried to listen to it when I was driving to Seattle and the guy's voice is too, it, it wouldn't pick up. I had to listen to it low because I had a kid in the car and she was like, I have my earbuds in and I can't really hear my music if you're listening to a lot. So I couldn't turn it up very loud. <laughs> so side note, we'll talk about that one next week. OK, ready? <laughs> All right, so this one just came out. This is, um, the audio came out this past week. So this is Dangerous Innocence by Cora Riley. This is the first book in her newest Mafia series. It's been out for about a year now or so. Um, and this is the Five Leaf Clover. Um, yeah, Five Leaf Clover series. So this is an Irish mafia. So this is about um, Ashley and she is from Ireland. Her sister has gone to America to become a model or to get sponsored to be a model. And so um, after she's been in America for a few months, Ashley's like, I haven't heard from her. Like with the whole fa the family's not heard from her. The sister has a little boy um, that Ashley is taken care of. And it's her and her mom and, and this little boy. And she's like, we have not heard from her. So I'm going to go to America. And my uncle is there as a um, priest, and I'm going to go and see if I can find my sister. And so that's what she does. But when she gets there, things aren't as, I mean, things aren't that great because her uncle works for the Irish mafia. And so she's in church one day, she sees this guy, uh, Lorcan, and he is the head of the Irish mafia in America. And he is taken by her innocence and the fact that she's this redhead from um, Ireland and she's beautiful and she happens to get into trouble while looking for her sister one day and that leads Lorcan to really liking her and forcing her to marry him so there you go um it was it was a solid for um it'll probably get better as it goes like I normally normally Cora Riley is a five for me I don't know if it was my mood this week where it wasn't a five or it's because it's the beginning of a series. Um, maybe it'll grow on me later, but I do. I mean, it was a four. It was a good four. So definitely read it, listen to it. Um, I didn't really care for the male narrator and that might've been why too. He was just sounded too old for Lorcan and he couldn't do a female voice to save his life. She, she had the same male voice as, as <laughs> Lorcan. And I got confused a few times as to who was talking. So next. 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 Next on repeating one minute book recs. <laughs> I read Quiet Beautiful Things by Samantha Christie. <laughs> All right, let's talk about that one. <laughs> All right, so we have Ellie, Dr. Ellie Stone. Now, Jessica, I'm going to pause my time for a second. I want to ask you a question. Did you read the book where she's the little kid, Elias? I, I haven't either. I don't think so. I'd have to go back and see which book it was. I've read a lot of Samantha Christie or a good handful of Samantha Christie. I don't think I've read the book where she's a little kid. And if I have, it's, I totally forgot. It's over my head. Her mom has her like in the book, basically. Yeah, I have. I, I And while reading this book, it made me want to read the mom's story. So I didn't even really I think I realized at the end, but I haven't gone back. So I had to figure out. Okay. So sorry. Okay. I so, digress. Okay. Go okay. ahead. So this is Ellie. She does, she has a book where she's the baby. <laughs> in it. Mm -hmm. So this is her all grown up. So she's Dr. Ellie Stone now. And she works, uh, she is deaf and she works at a deaf school. She just got a job there. And she's living on her own. So she's very excited to have like some independence and all of that. And there is this guy. Oh, crap. I'm looking at the wrong notes. I'm like, that's not his name. <laughs> Blake, who uh, lives in this town. And they have run into each other. They keep having these little, like, little meet cutes. But they don't actually ever talk to each other because it's like in passing. So Blake does not know that she is deaf. They just, they haven't had like an official meeting yet. But there's definitely some chemistry for both of them there. And then Blake, who is like 
he's he's had his way with the women gets a knock on his door one day and says hey we need you to take a paternity test you may be the father of this little girl and if so we need you to take custody of her like asap the grandparents um are going to be leaving town and the mom is in rehab and so he willingly takes the test and finds out the little girl is his. He meets her and finds out, oh, that was my timer, Jessica. He okay. finds out that she is actually deaf, but nobody has done anything for her. So she's not been taught sign language. She's not had proper medical care, none of that. So he um, immediately gets hooked up with the school and they send Dr. Ellie Stone out to mm -hmm. help him, help his daughter. And that is where... The story really starts to take place. I really, really enjoyed it. I rated a solid four. There is like a little bit of a subplot that happens where I was like, eh, I would have liked to have seen that just not even be in there and just yeah. focus more on the couple. But you know, whatever. Still a solid four. And just like Jessica, I really enjoy Samantha Christie. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good one. So yeah. okay. So my husky's talking now. This is why we don't film in the afternoon. Just just saying. <laughs> I know we need to hurry up before my kids come back from fishing and are like, oh, <laughs> exactly. <"Hey." laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, after reading Neva Altai, uh, it, earlier in the week, it made me really miss Neva Altai and a certain character that's my favorite because we see him through all throughout the series and he really is my favorite. So, I had to go back and do a reread of one of Neva Altai's books. So, we're going to talk about that. You reread instead of continuing in the series. I did. I love this character so yeah, much. Yeah, he shows up. In the very last book, he does some funny stuff. You have I'm sure got to read it. But I needed his book first. Okay, let's just talk about it. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Okay, so I read, this is book three. This is Hidden Truths. Read the whole series if you haven't. I know Mandy and I talk about this series all the time. Read the series. It is great. And the books are not, I mean, as they go, they get a little bit thicker, but the last one's thicker, but this one is just, it's not. So this is uh, Sergei and Angelina's book. And Angelina is the daughter of a cartel kingpin guy um, in Mexico. And her dad is killed by this rival person who comes in and this person is forcing her to marry him and she doesn't want to and so her um nanny who she calls uh, was her nanny was a little girl she calls her grandma she smuggles her out onto this truck sergey is a part of the the mafia in the u.s and they find out this truck is coming across with drugs and they're going to go blow it up or do whatever they're going to do they're going to blow it up and um sergey is the most unhinged character he is absolutely unhinged crazy like beyond crazy and he goes on this mission. They get to the truck. He gets in the truck because he's got to blow the truck up. He gets in the truck and he finds Angelina who has been stowed away in this truck across the border. And she's sick and emaciated and, and you know, all the good, like just all that. She's just bad. So he picks her up and decides she's going to be his. And he's going to keep her. And he didn't even have to club her over the head. He didn't. She was too weak. He just brought her home. <laughs> yeah. So that was my last one for the week. What do you have? I read A Father's Bliss by Lee Jacu. Okay. Jacu. Is it Jacquois? Jacquois. Oh my God, it probably is. <laughs> I was looking at the name earlier this week and I went, I bet you money it's Jacquois. <laughs> oh. You're the one that took French. I took Spanish. In high school. But you know what? Well, it's a long time ago. <laughs> my French, two years of French, has definitely paid off into my adulthood. Oh, I bet it has. So, I read A Father's Bliss by Lee Jacquois. Jacu. Anyway, so we have me starting the timer. We have Renee, <laughs> who is works at this publishing house and her dad also works there and her dad kind of has this like arch nemesis but not really marcus marcus has a son that renee dated for a year while sort of daydreaming about marcus himself so her and the son have broke up and marcus's um assistant person is on maternity leave and he needs help with rent manuscripts so she um steps into that role okay Again, she has the hots for him, right? Even though he's her ex's dad, 
follow that train. Okay. So they decide to go out to a dinner that's like a flirtatious work dinner. And they leave the dinner to go hang out on his boat. So the rest of the story all takes place on his boat. There are fishing rod comments. There is like a lot of smut in this book. But that is what you come to this for, okay? So from this boat, that leads to sayings like, I'm not my son. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So solid four stars but you have to read the holly night series knowing what you're getting so you're getting mm -hmm. a holiday themed novella that is just a smutty good time and this is the very last one so i was kind of bummed there's a few more i haven't read yet so stay tuned for future holidays labor day i'm looking at you <laughs> yay all right That concludes my reading journal entries for the week. So that's it. That's our week. Ta-da! Yay! It was a short one, but we had very crazy weeks. A week between the two of us. So um, for us, it was short. Okay. Yeah. But very long. The short one reading. All right. Okay. So comment below. What do you think about the books we read this week? <laughs> Tell us the bookish things. Mm -hmm. What do you want to see us do in videos? Yeah. How's life? What's new? Talk What's to going us. On? Yeah. 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 Spill the tea. Yeah. That's but what they... we tried to call this for a while when we first started. Bestie, Bestie book, book tea. tea. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we would spill the tea on all the books we read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a working title. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, make sure you check back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for new videos from us and also surprised video drops. So hit that no notification button. Check out Wednesday for Grace McGinty's interview. Yeah. I, I it is gonna be a hoot. So yeah, I can't wait. We're so check excited. that out. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.